Satan, the enemy of God, is in reality the highest divine spirit. Hey guys, Steve here. In this video we're going to be looking at how the entire New Age movement is actually satanic and Luciferian at its roots. And before we take a look at some research, I just want to make a few things really clear. I'm not saying everyone involved in the New Age movement is satanic, and I'm not saying every single topic or every single pursuit within the New Age movement is satanic. But what we'll be looking at is how the side of the New Age movement that has to deal with spirituality and has to do with the occult is entirely rooted in satanic philosophy. And this comes from, not me, but the founder of the Church of Satan himself. And the point of this video is not to fearmonger or to preach Jesus to you or something. Christianity could be false and it wouldn't even affect the point of this video. The point of this video is really just to encourage those who might be dabbling within the New Age movement to follow the evidence where it leads and to turn away from things which might be dangerous or harmful. So with that being said, let's take a look at some stuff. So to start off, one of the most famous occultists in history is someone named Anton LaVey. He has been called the Black Pope and the father of Satanism because he is the one who founded the Church of Satan and brought it to the Western world as an organized religion. He is the author of the Satanic Bible, along with four other Satanic books, and he has an extensive background in the occult. In fact, he was the founder of the Order of the Trapezoid, where he used to give presentations on the occult and paranormal research, which later evolved into the Church of Satan. So the Church of Satan was birthed out of his interest and affiliation with the occult. When I first became Christian, I was a little overambitious, and I went out and bought the Satanic Bible, which I've since thrown out, to speed read it to see if I could find any parallels between the New Age movement and the Satanic Bible. And when I was reading through it, I was finding topics like the Age of Aquarius, Lucifer as the personification of enlightenment, Thoth, spirit guides, pantheism, spiritual rebirth through studying the mysteries, the all-seeing eye, being your own redeemer and savior through enlightenment. It sounded like a slightly darker version of the exact same topics that were discussed in the New Age. So I dug a little deeper and I found this quote by Anton LaVey. In the scores of books lining the shelves of New Age bookstores, there are instructions for guided meditation, creative visualizations, out-of-body experiences, getting in touch with your spirit guides, fortune-telling by cards, crystal balls, or the stars. What if Satanists reclaimed these for their own dark purposes and integrated them into rituals dedicated to the devil, where they rightfully belong? New Agers have freely drawn upon all manner of satanic material, adapting it to their own hypocritical purposes. But in truth, all New Age labeling is, again, trying to play the devil's game without using his infernal name. So some people hearing that might be offended, they might feel a little off-put by that, but this isn't coming from me, this is coming from the father of Satanism, who spent his entire life studying the occult. So I think a good question to ask might be, is it possible that he knows something that we don't know yet? As it turns out, the entire New Age movement has its roots in satanic philosophy, and it was actually popularized and basically founded by a Satanist. And we're going to take a look at that right now. Some of you might be familiar with a woman named Helena Blavatsky. She is an occultist and a spiritualist from the 19th century who has been called the mother of the New Age and the mother of modern spirituality because of how far-reaching her impact has been on the New Age movement. She co-founded the Theosophical Society, which taught and published esoteric material pertaining to theosophy. Theosophy, according to Wikipedia, refers to systems of esoteric philosophy concerning or seeking direct knowledge of presumed mysteries of being and nature, particularly concerning the nature of divinity. Theosophy is considered a part of a broader field of esotericism, referring to hidden knowledge or wisdom that offers the individual enlightenment and salvation. The society taught everything you could possibly imagine that could fall under the umbrella of the New Age, and really gave rise to the entire New Age movement. As new religious movements research specialist from the University of California, Dr. J. Gordon Melton said, No single organization or movement has contributed so many components to the New Age movement as the Theosophical Society. It has been the major force in the dissemination of occult literature in the West in the 20th century. He has also said, Madame Blavatsky stands out as the fountainhead of modern occult thought and was either the originator and or popularizer of many of the ideas and terms which have a century later been assembled within the New Age movement. The Theosophical Society, which she co-founded, has been a major advocate of occult philosophy in the West and the single most important avenue of Eastern teaching to the West. So she was the major player in the popularization of New Age subjects. She would teach on things like Ascended Masters, Ancient Mythology, Hermeticism, Hinduism, Mysticism, Scientism, Astrology, Sacred Math, Esoteric Knowledge, Chakras, Atlantis, Kabbalah, and every other New Age topic. Between 1887 and 1997, 
over 2,800 journals were published in the theosophical magazine she started called Lucifer. Yes, that's right. The mother of modern spirituality published her journals in her magazine, Lucifer. Now, some of you might be like, wait a minute, Lucifer is not Satan. Lucifer is a symbol for enlightenment. He's the light bearer. I'll make another video in the future showing how, in scriptural terms, Lucifer actually is Satan. Lucifer became Satan after he fell. But we don't even have to go there because Helena Blavatsky herself calls Lucifer Satan. In fact, in volume two of her primary work, The Secret Doctrine, she glorifies and praises Satan well over a hundred times, calling him the one true God and the savior of humanity. So right now I'm going to read through some quotes that are in volume two of The Secret Doctrine, and I'll include a link to the entire book in the description of this video, so you can go and read these yourself. Satan is the anointed cherub of old. God created Satan, the fairest and wisest of all his creatures in this part of his universe, and made him prince of the world and of the power of the air. Thus, Satan being perfect in wisdom and beauty, his vast empire is our earth, if not the whole solar system. Certainly, no other angelic power of greater or even equal dignity has been revealed to us. It is Satan who is the god of our planet, and the only god. In this case, it is but natural, even from the dead letter standpoint, to view Satan, the serpent of Genesis, as the real creator and benefactor, the father of spiritual mankind. For it is he who is the harbinger of light, bright, radiant Lucifer, who opened the eyes of the automation created by Jehovah, as alleged, and he who was the first to whisper, In the day ye eat thereof ye shall be as Elohim, knowing good and evil, can only be regarded in light of a savior. Satan, the enemy of God, is in reality the highest divine spirit. Lucifer is divine and terrestrial light, the Holy Ghost, and Satan at one and the same time. So here is the mother of the New Age, who has had the largest influence on this movement, praising Satan as the spiritual father of mankind and the one true God of this universe. Is it possible that he's the spiritual father of the New Age movement and the type of esoteric material that was taught by Blavatsky? Let's take a look at another major influencer on the New Age movement and popularizer of the occult, who some of you are probably already familiar with. His name is Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley was a famous occultist and a 33rd degree Freemason from the early 1900s. He was a bona fide expert in the occult and has had a major influence on making esoteric material accessible to the West. He has also had a massive influence on Gerald Gardner, who is credited with bringing Wicca and witchcraft to the mainstream. In fact, the Wiccan rules and other witchcraft initiation rituals were taken almost word for word by Gerald from Crowley's material. He has also had influence on Timothy Leary, who claimed he was carrying out Crowley's work. Well, I've been an admirer of Aleister Crowley. I think that uh, I'm carrying on much of the work that uh, he started uh, over 100 years ago, and I think the 60s themselves. You know, Crowley said uh, uh, he was in favor of, uh, of uh, finding your own self and, and uh, uh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law under love. It was a very powerful statement. I'm sorry he isn't around now to appreciate the glories that he started. And even had influence on Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan. The AA, or Argentium Astrum, is a spiritual organization he founded in 1907. Students would enter the order and then master certain occultic tasks and learn and study esoteric knowledge in order to graduate to the next level. If you were to be initiated into the order of AA, here are some of the things that you would learn about. Astral projection, Hinduism, Kabbalah, yoga, magic, non-duality, ascended masters, the tree of life, transcendental meditation, higher selves, Buddhism, mysticism, Gnosticism, sorcery, rituals of the pentagram and hexagram, tarot cards, the zodiac, and many, many other topics that get taught under the umbrella of the New Age movement. There was a reason he was called by some to be a modern master of the occult, and it's because he knew what he was talking about. But like Blavatsky, he also had ties to Satanism. He referred to himself as the Beast 666, and once said, I was not content to believe in a personal devil and serve him in the ordinary sense of the word. I wanted to get hold of him personally and become his chief of staff. He has also said, for the highest spiritual working, one must accordingly choose that victim which contains the greatest and purest force. A male child of perfect innocence and high intelligence is the most satisfactory and suitable victim. For nearly all purposes, human sacrifice is the best. He has also said, it is, however, always easy to call up the demons, for they are always calling you, and you only have to step down to their level and fraternize them. They will then tear you in pieces at their leisure. Nevertheless, every magician must firmly extend his empire to the depth of hell. He has also said, This serpent, Satan, is not the enemy of man, but he who made gods of our race, knowing good and evil. 
he bade know thyself and taught initiation. He is the devil of the Book of Thoth, and his emblem is Baphomet, the androgene who is the hieroglyph of arcane perfection. So here's another major player in the New Age movement, calling Satan the god of our race. After being involved in the occult for over half a century and dedicating his entire life to magic, the spiritual mysteries, and the occult, he left this world a broke drug addict with the final words, I am perplexed. Satan, get out. Others say his last words were, I am perplexed, along with, sometimes I hate myself. With all due respect, do we really think that he was just a few more spiritual mysteries or a few more occult topics away from leaving this world in peace? Maybe if he hadn't left the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn so soon? Or if he would have studied Gnosticism a little more diligently? He's the most famous occultist who ever lived, had a massive influence on the New Age movement, and left this world totally confused, hating himself, and may or may not have had Satan breathing over his shoulder. So why are the three most famous occultists of all time all mesmerized with Satan? Is this just a coincidence, or is it possible that Satanism and the occult actually go hand in hand? What if Helena Blavatsky was right, and what if Anton LaVey was right when he said that New Age ideas and themes really belong attached to Satanic and Luciferian philosophy? To take a dive a little bit deeper, there's a website called Joy of Satan Ministries. It's a website dedicated to spiritual Satanism, and on their website you can learn about the following topics in depth. Astrology, auras, magic, self-hypnosis, incense, pendulums, runes, telekinesis, brainwaves, clairvoyance, past lives, chanting, the pineal gland, the chakras, bioelectric technology, the astral plane, spells, the kundalini serpent, and trance. And you can learn all of this stuff from their satanic witchcraft index, their information about the human mind, and their index of satanic meditations. Why would the Joy of Satan Ministries teach these things unless they were consistent with spiritual Satanism? The ideas and themes of the New Age are the exact same ideas taught in spiritual Satanism, and that should be concerning to some of us. And these are the same ideas that were taught by Helena Blavatsky and Aleister Crowley advocated along a satanic philosophy, and are the very ideas that Anton LaVey accused the New Age of stealing from the devil. Now, somebody might say, okay, maybe some famous occultists from the past had some ties to Luciferian philosophy or something, but we don't see that going on today anymore. The New Age has completely disconnected from any kind of ties to Luciferian or Satanic philosophy, and they have nothing in common anymore. Well, take a look at this. Mars looked very much like Earth a little less than a million years ago. It was beautiful. It had oceans and water and trees that were just fantastic. But something happened to them, and it has to do with something called the Lucifer Experiment. From the very beginning of creation, everything is simply an experiment. Creation itself was just consciousness creating and inhabiting itself in that creation. There is no divine plan. Spirit can do whatever it wants. Having said that, if spirit decides to cut itself off from the rest of consciousness and create a separate reality on its own, it can do that too. This is called the Lucifer Experiment. Because spirit is God, it can do this. There is nothing wrong with that. We've kind of been led to believe that Lucifer is evil and the devil. This just isn't true. Lucifer is just another means of perceiving the reality. It is not a unity perception of oneness, but rather a duality perception of two-ness. There's a flower of life pattern for Lucifer as well, but that's a big topic for another time. So here is Spirit Science, the largest New Age website in the world, the largest New Age YouTube channel in the world, a website I used to write for, showing signs of Luciferian philosophy that Helena Blavatsky advocated. And there's an article on the Spirit Science website that talks about this a little bit more. The Lucifer experiment, if you recall from the Human History movie, was about a particular consciousness connected to the All who didn't want to play the same boring song. He wanted to be his own rock star. And so he split himself off from God consciousness and did his own thing, creating chaos and destruction in his wake. Now, the reason this is showing up in the work of spirit science is because most of Jordan's material is based off of the material of Drunvalo Melchizedek, who wrote The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life, Volumes 1 and 2, most of which the spirit science series is based off of. So the largest New Age website and the largest New Age YouTube channel in the world right now is based off of material that, as we're about to see, praises Lucifer in the exact same way Helena Blavatsky did. And I'm going to read some quotes right now from The Flower of Life, Volume 2, and I'll include a link to that book in the description too, so you can double check. Lucifer did not create free will, but it was through his actions and decisions that free will became a reality. It was God who created Lucifer so that free will would exist. I am in no way attempting to protect Lucifer or sanction his acts. I am simply giving a new slash old perspective on what is behind what Lucifer is doing in the universe, that, once understood, allows the possibility of transcending good and evil and entering into pure oneness with God. 
So this is basically saying that if you understand Lucifer's role in the universe, you can transcend the duality of good and evil, transcend the duality of righteousness and sin, and you can skip past Jesus and enter into a holy union with God if only you understand Lucifer's role in the universe. So evidently, with God's blessing, since he created him, Lucifer started on a great experiment to see what could be learned by creating in a different way from how God slash spirit had made the original creation. So Lucifer, according to this book, is also a creator god, just like Helena Blavatsky said. Lucifer told the angelic realms that we needed to do this experiment because the universe had missing information, and the only way to get the information was to live it. So yeah, the entire fall of angels that the Bible talks about, that's because God created a universe with missing information. And Lucifer and his angels apparently had to fall because there was, quote, missing information that had to be experienced. So this Luciferian philosophy is right at the heart of the New Age movement and was at the heart of the New Age movement from the very beginning. So we have looked at how the father of the Church of Satan accused the New Age of stealing from Satan. We have seen the most influential man and woman on the New Age movement praise Satan and teach esoteric philosophy alongside Luciferian doctrine. We have seen how spiritual Satanists use New Age practices and ideas in their own devotions to Satan. And we have seen how Lucifer has even made his way into the spirit science series. And this, of course, begs the question, and this is the whole point of the video right here. Is it possible that the material taught alongside Luciferian philosophy is part of the same deception? Is it not likely that any material that advocates Lucifer or Satan in a positive light would be filled with lies and deception? So I think this should really make us ask the question, you know, is it possible that Anton LaVey was right? Is it possible that all of these lifetime occultists who started the entire New Age movement know something that we don't? Is it possible that maybe New Agers, like I used to be, were simply cherry-picking from Luciferian doctrine and just leaving his name out? Well, stick around because we're going to look at each individual topic in the New Age on an in-depth basis to show that this is exactly what's happening. Because any subject or idea that gets consistently taught along a Satanic or Luciferian philosophy should be questioned and should even be doubted. And so this is not about me trying to guilt trip people or fear monger or anything like this. It's just to present the possibility that maybe some people have followed a trail of breadcrumbs down the wrong path. And I'm not trying to condemn anybody or anything like this. I just want to encourage people into the direction of truth and away from stuff that's harmful or dangerous. Paul once said that Satan masquerades himself as an angel of light. And maybe it's the case that this is exactly what we're seeing within the New Age movement. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. If you've made it this far in the video and, and you're into the New Age movement, if it turns out that something's actually false and something's actually dangerous, we should be willing to just put it down and move on to the thing that corresponds with truth. The best definition of open-mindedness that I've heard is being willing to follow the evidence where it leads regardless of how it makes us feel. And my prayer and my hope is that those of you who have watched this far in the video will stay tuned and stick around and be willing to follow the evidence where it leads. And I think it obviously leads to Jesus, but we'll talk about that in future videos. So I'll see you guys next time, and until then, take care. My journey down the rabbit hole really started when I was in high school, when I first saw an episode of Ancient Aliens on the History Channel. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a television show that presents all the evidence that ancient man was visited in the past by extraterrestrials who they thought were, you know, gods descending down from the sky. So this completely blew my mind and called into question, you know, the biblical worldview that I had been raised with.